Intimidation coming into game number two here, Murda. Uh, yeah, um, waiting to see where we're heading for game number two. Let's see if our uh, fantastic administrators have let us know yet. And word <laughs> is coming in. It will be Dragon Ooh, Shire. A bit different from what we've been seeing for most of the night here on the Heroes Hype stream. Uh, Dragon Shire is one of those, honestly, secret favorites of mine. It's annoying, but uh, allows for some very interesting uh, compositions and spreads from your team, depending on those compositions. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, a lot of emphasis on the top lane matchup. You'll see if Yorel sneaks through the ban phase again. Um, but uh, you have option to see, again, the Dahaka, I think, gets plenty of value here. It can get up and down the map quickly to help capture these shrines and get the control in favor of your team. Uh, but I, I think Yorel will certainly see a ban here. Um, perhaps we see a Sergeant Hammer, which was banned in game number one by Divination. Did they want to pull that out? Um, can sometimes find value here. Um, a few different options available. And it's our first look at Dragon Shire here in cup number seven. Yeah, and I mean, as Switch Cat is currently saying, Faye on that Li Ming being able to blink out of so many cocoons coming out from BKB just shows how technical she is as a player and how difficult it is to land those types of shots onto someone like her. So we're going to have to see some kind of uh, adjustment coming out from Divination in those types of strategies. And I'm really excited to see what they pull out to try to stay alive in this tournament tonight. Um, reminder of the Heroes Hype Patreon that we have. We've been talking about it all night, and we're going to keep talking about it while we wait for this game to queue up. Make sure you check it out, see what reward tiers we do have. You have potential to come to our Discord, come hang out with folks like Murder and I, our streamers, our staff, uh, and also get invited to special events at events such as BlizzCon, as what, as what, uh, along with Western Clash. We had a great time at Guildhall after Western Clash, by the way. So I'm just saying we know how to throw a party. So if that's your thing, uh, definitely check that out. If you can't, it's no worries. You can support us on social media. We have Facebook and Snapchat and Twitter and all the good things. So make sure to check out those panels below. It looks like we are nearly ready to get this game started off and my golly so many grandmasters in this matchup by the way as well i think a total of four <laughs> between the two teams or five yep. it might have been so we're looking at some high skill play here murda uh yeah definitely a, a fun little matchup game number one was honestly one of the closest games we've had all night uh, i think we had <laughs> another one that was pretty close like um maybe that last game between fwc and doki doki we saw in the first set uh but that game number one was fantastic. Quite the comeback from Necro Dancers, able to pull it off in the end, um, winning the final three Immortals up against a pretty deadly race squad uh, on the side of Divination. Here we see Dahaka, Medivh, banned out uh, for the second time by Divination. It's going to be Maiev on the side of Necro Dancers pairing up with the Johanna. Yeah, the Johanna. Uh, being able to stun a lot of heroes out of their heroics. Something taking off the board, I do not blame at all. We're going to see a reprise on that URL for Divination. I'm going to guess we see the response so of sure Blaze later do. on, but for now, we're getting Zeratul and Deckard Kane here. Uh, so, as mentioned, the attacker has been playing very well on Deckard Kane tonight. Um, and counting here, this is his third game of the evening on the hero. He's made it through a lot of drafts tonight, uh, but we started seeing, you know, a, a bit more of some of the other supports. Like we uh, in our you first set, we you. saw the Ana, we saw the coming. Lucio, but now we're starting to get into more of the the meta of the supports. Deckard Kane and White Mane both going to make a reappearance here on Dragonshire. The reappearance of White Mane and Rainer is very interesting. It shows that Divination feels that they both still have a place regardless of map. We saw some interesting points uh, in game number one where it felt like any other healer maybe would have been able to keep some members of Divination alive in very tight circumstances. So I'm wondering how the play from White Mane, White Mane is going to adjust into this combination composition coming out from Necrodancers. Uh, once again, they're going to ban out the Sergeant Hammer. Um, 
once again we see Muradin banned out. So the only new ban here was Johanna, as now it is going to be Diablo and Hanzo, the selections for Necrodancer. Yeah, Hanzo has amazing poke potential in that mid lane uh, around that try and capture point. So definitely check that out. Scouting up for vision, setting up for potential ganks for the rest of the team, especially for that Zeratul. In response, we get the Anubarak yet again, followed up by a Phoenix that, with the slows coming out from Raynor, should assess possibly that Purification Salvo. Uh, and Ezero going to take up that Blaze yet again here. I mean, this is a fairly similar matchup to what we just saw. Uh, Phoenix is going to be uh, helping out Raynor. Uh, they're going to kind of feed off each other's slows a bit, um, which is a fantastic synergy between these heroes. And there's no blinds on the other side, so um, could be a lot of damage coming out from Raynor and Phoenix. We do see the Blaze again. Um, we're going to get our first look at Hanzo from Necker Dancer since they played him in game number two up against FWC where they got that victory. Um, I think player to watch, once again, the attacker on Deckard Kane. if he can continue to do what he's done tonight on this hero, you're looking at a 2-0 win for Necker Dancer. Yeah, we've had so many amazing plays coming out from all members of Necker Dancers, to be honest, that any of them could really set up the victory here in this series. Again, we had Faye with those calculated blink dodges on that Li Ming. We had Ezreal with those amazing bunker saves uh, throughout the match. So it could be anyone's game at this point, but Divination Dude, going to have to find a way to come back to here in game number two as we kick off on the left-hand side. We still have Necro Dancers. We're gonna have Physicals on Zeratul, the attacker on Decker Kane. Faye will be on Hanzo, Ezreal on Blaze, and Huff Money over on Diablo. And on the right-hand side, we got Divination. Battle Wolf going to be playing the white main. Seconds. Noah on the Rainer. Big going to be playing the Phoenix. Anyarel will be Liam and rounding it Three, out. The drafter here one. for Divination. It's BKB on Anubarak. Yeah, and I definitely don't want to count out BKB's Anubarak in that game. There were so many... Clutch stuns coming out, setting up for the rest of the team to really put in that damage. And even though there was a bit of a misbalance uh, throughout the game favoring one team or another, it always felt like every team fight could go either way. So even when either of these teams are seemingly are down, they are never out. So we're going to have to keep an eye on who wants to be the aggressor and who is going to be on the retreat in this matchup. Yeah, so far, uh, a lot of emphasis here on this bottom lane. I think you talked about it during draft. Hanzo getting tremendous value down here, especially uh, when that altar spawns. He's able to just throw so many serrated arrows in there, uh, scatter arrows rather, and and rip through some health bars and really make uh, white main will probably have a pretty difficult time up against it. So eyes on Faye. I think she has a real opportunity to make something happen with that hero. Interesting changeup coming up from White Mane at level 1. We're going to have Righteous Flame coming out instead for the first time, I believe, in the series. Uh, doing 50% more damage with that Searing Lash on anyone who uh, is either stunned, rooted, silenced, slowed, which really puts out a lot of damage when you pair it with something like that Rainer with uh, that Phoenix uh, later on in the game. So looking to get a bit more damage impact. Uh, for this white nation. Um, you know, uh, definitely a hero that we've had opportunity over the past, uh, what, three weeks or so to play against in our matches. But not a lot of competitive games have had a white main in it. And it's always uh, a bit of a surprise early when heroes are released to figure out what's going to work and what's not going to work. Uh, game number one, I thought Wolf did a fantastic job on the hero. Uh, but we got to see a bit more playmaking, a bit more uh, ways to keep, especially the front line with BKB up there, uh, keep them alive and try to enable this Phoenix and Rainer later on when she can get her root. Yeah, absolutely. The Shrines now spawning their capture points. One on one going on each side. We're still seeing that Blaze Yellow Rats match up up there in the top lane. And this is starting to look a lot like last game with Divination pushing in this bottom lane, getting a bit of an advantage there, being able to capture both points for the time being. But Ezreal and Physical is making sure Big is not able to get the dragon 
just yet barely making it out alive a beautiful teleport to save their lives but that is a rough looking phoenix right there buddy uh yeah that was um physical is almost making a huge play getting that kill on phoenix um bottom side though it will be recaptured by the members of necro dancers and they're gonna hold it for the time being as mentioned Faye is so strong in this position on this bottom lane uh with the scatter arrows and stepping on top of white main but will likely take a chunk of damage if anyone wants to step forward huff money's here but uh rainer in response it's noah making sure huff money cannot press forward onto that point now in control will be divination huff money trying to recapture it but completely surrounded by this rainer damage and huff money's uh, a little bit afraid to step too far in so just kind of dancing back and forth grabbing potions from decker kane for right now yeah, absolutely. Again, playing the slow game, not trying to push in too hard, waiting for Dialmo to stack up a bit more. Currently sitting at 52 souls for Huff Money as well. That is going to allow Wolf to get some damage out onto that Diablo. The Ritz coming out from the attacker onto a Nubarak. Beautiful scattering errors coming out, trying to disrupt. Ezreal looking in a really terrible place. The blink in from Big, the beautiful teleport to help confirm that kill and give Divination level seven here in game number two. Yeah, big pickup. First blood, and now Phoenix will get first Dragon Knight of the game. Divination looking pretty solid. Uh, BKP once again on this Anubarak, and really helping to enable some of these team fights. And you can see his experience playing at the top level up in HCC Europe, and he's he's got that bit of swag that you don't see on every open division player here in these tournaments. And the type of change he's bringing to this Divination squad. Um, it's just really impressive, and, and I would love to see them bring this to a game number three. Yeah, absolutely, and they are definitely looking for that as well. As this Dragon Knight is roaming around trying to get any small advantages it can, taking out front court structures, trying to prepare for later Dragon Knights and later pushes with camps. Still about half health as well, but the kick going out onto Diablo, making room for Phoenix to focus on taking down that well, which will absolutely help Divination control these shrine points later on in this game. And they got themselves that one level lead, which means all the difference is now Blaze caught off. Pod Pyromania is aerial, gonna back up, will not fall to that jump from Liam or that laser from Big. He survives, uses a well tap, back in range of some potions from Decker Kane as well. Uh, but that was a scary moment for Blaze there. Yeah, absolutely. I thought Ezreal was going to fall there. Uh, but the shot actually coming out from Noah almost kind of saved their life as it pushed them back closer to their team, able to protect any additional damage coming out. So, blessing in disguise from that bullet, I would say. Absolutely. Uh, both teams going to pick up their siege camps, going to push down this bottom lane. Uh, the bruiser camp still available. Wouldn't be surprised if Faye wants to scout that out with the sonic arrow. It appears they did. Um, and so they can potentially go down there and grab that, but they do see a new Brack in lane. They want to clear out the opposing Siege Giants and try to get some push onto this four wall. As you saw what happened with the Dragon Knight early in the game, it ripped through their well, and they got to find a way to match that up or else his bottom lane over time, as you mentioned, will be favoring Divination. Uh, the level 10s here, it's another thing to be scared of. Yeah, Necrodans is immediately backing up to their fort once that level 10 came out. The Purification Solve accommodation with the slows uh, available from Rainer is going to be something to look out for, or at the very least, a great disengagement tool uh, to disincentivize by Necrodancer from pushing into the team too far once they're comfortable getting a fight on their own. But for now, Divination claiming their sport as their own, getting set up to take this camp while they still barely have this advantage. And it's gonna have to go quick because 10 is hitting right now for Necro Dancers, and they are going in knowing that their opponents are at this camp. Yeah, and uh, like the Sonic Arrow hit Rainer's Raider. So <laughs> <laughs> it's actually like flying around giving vision of everything. So they do jump in, they steal this Bruiser Cam, finally got their level 10. Uh, enormous there for them to be able to make that play because uh, that would have meant they have zero percent chance at controlling this bottom altar, but they do have it for now. Blaze is going to head back up against Yorel, but has been struggling. Liam doing a fantastic job on Yorel this entire game, as Ariel's got to be able to make a play up there in a 1v1 situation because they cannot afford to rely on Zeratul making that long rotation from this bottom side up to the top just to help the Blaze. 
Yeah, Blaze has to do something, at least push off just a little bit. Either that or simply give up top lane and fully commit down here on bottom and try to get some kind of advantage. We've seen Necro Dancers again down before that 12 to 13 fight on Battlefield of Eternity that they were ready to take. Big spotting on physicals, getting a little bit of damage in, uh, preventing that rotation onto the URL in top lane. And Divination looking to try to come in, contest this capture point and make something happen. Damage coming out from Wolf onto Huff Money. And now Necro Dancers on the retreat as four members come down to the spot lane. That Inquisition is so annoying from White Mane. You see Anubarak taking some of that charge damage into the wall from Diablo. Uh, pops one Desperate Flea and then just Inquisition full healing BKB back up. White Mane so powerful in the single target heal department when she wants to. Yeah, absolutely. And we saw again that level one adding to the damage she deals, which allows her to heal more. And so being able to keep those members alive, avoid prison coming out from physicals. Lornado trying to capture the members on top of the dragon arrow. Lightning breath coming out. The focus is on Wolf the Cocoon. Captures Helmet for the time being. Purification Salvo is now following up, trying to get damage out onto the members of Necro Dancers. Diablo is going to be the first fault, and BKB trying to go on the chase, but Wolf going to capture this shrine. Ezreal capturing top in trade, but the members of Divination rotating up, trying to see if they can get their second Dragonite of this game. Huff Money having those souls reset as well, making that frontline a bit softer for the time being. Yeah, so unfortunate in that fight for Necro Dancers. They, they weren't focusing on White Mane, and they were splitting out some damage, and it ended up everyone survived just because... White main is white main. Had that Scarlet Aegis and kept your team alive in the fight. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of fight, we have BKB going in. The bunker is going to come out from Ezreal just to save them alone. Liam trying to tease the channel here for this Dragonite, but the air is coming out from face, stalling it a bit longer. But Dragonite eventually going in Urel in the Dragon, and they are coming down mid, looking for a fort. Necro Dancers trying to clean up elsewhere at the time being, trying to get their team so they can feel more at home going into these fights and not having to worry about getting wiped. Yeah, they're gonna have to find a sneaky play with Zeratul backside looking for the Void Prison. Um, we'll see if they can find an avenue, but right now this rotation up the top by the Dragon Knight uh, is gonna mean some more XP. They're getting dangerously close to having uh, 16 talent here. They're only about a level in uh, a tenth away from grabbing it um, almost level 15 right now is this tower should give them uh, 15 right now uh, big ooh, boot blaze ooh. over the wall no on the wall barely surviving but getting trapped in by that roof from wolf pops the bunker still in a bad spot lornado gonna help disengage this fight decker kane keeping everyone alive another boot there uh, but it actually ends up being a fantastic defense here by necro dancers only 10 seconds left and this fort will be able to survive um Still no level 16s for Divination. That was such a money kick from the dragon, trying to get Blaze dead. Lightning Breath coming out. Noah taking a lot of damage there. BKB trying to body the Void Prison comes out. BKB walks into it, trying to stop just for a little while longer, while White Mane tries to heal up, but that does not save a new rock whatsoever. And Necro Dancers able to get that pick, avoid their opponents from getting level 16 just yet, Murda. Yeah, that was huge. Just before the 16s, finding that fight, finding that kill. The Dragon's Arrow from Faye was on the money, connecting on multiple targets. Uh, the Void Prison isolating two members there. Um, and then they found BKB so low on health, they're able to kill him off and found their first kill of the game. And now they're able to find a couple Merc Camps here in this bottom lane, which should uh, potentially allow them to work down this fort and see if they can make a play on it. But they lack a bit of siege damage. Having the Hanzo, having the Zeratul, they don't have a very strong seizure in the game. So they have to rely upon these mercenary camps to make it happen. And uh, here's their opportunity to have any chance to get in 16 anytime soon before this next uh, Shrine phase starts. Yeah, the timing was a little bit off. The mercenaries taking a lot of the tower shots before the minions were able to get there. Zeratul ends up being melted here as Necrodrancer is now on the tree. Uh, 
Cocoon going out onto Hanzo. BKB trying to push the rest of the members of Necrodancers back so they can focus on stunning and killing Faye. And that is two kills for Divination now pushing into this bottom lane, trying to prep this, get damage onto these towers, perhaps take out a well, take out this wall and prepare them for a later Dragonite in this game. Uh, this is enormous. Of course, top side, they also still have a Bruiser Cam pushing, which no one's responding to right now, so that fort's under pressure. Uh, they still have uh, Necro Dancers a full level Dragon away from getting level 16, so Free this Dragon Knight should be pretty enemy. easy for them to get to, but up top, you see the rotation from Necro Dancers coming out. They're going to clear up the Bruiser Camp. They're going to leave Blaze to grab the top shrine but you're also actually gonna get there first Liam popping over the wall and here goes the channel so mid is now under threat diablo's here but is now backing away as huff money as the channel is gonna start coming out phoenix grabbing the dragonite and does secure it for divination beautiful grab there great pressure using that advantage for divination to grab this dragonite there third i believe for this game uh and immediately heading down to this bottom lane that they were trying to prepare before they have that camp pushing there as well so they are going all in trying to get as much focus in this bottom lane as possible and this is potential for the first keeper of the game siege giants gonna join up as well big clear from from bay uh with that big explosive arrow gonna make sure the minions aren't here so dragonite gonna take some keep damage Sea Giant still on this backside. Blaze trying to do it again. Yorel barely missing that jump on top. But this keep is under pressure. It is going to fall. It will be the first keep of the game in favor of Divination. And they haven't left this lane yet. Dragonite booting away Zerat Cool. Um, as the rest of the members are still here. But I would expect a little bit of rotation potentially working on the mid lane as well. Uh, but it appears that is all they're going to find is level 16 is now picked up. For the members of Necro Dancers, and Huff Money is not gonna let Phoenix go. He's staying here trying to get positioning right when he pops out. Only five seconds left, and Huff Money is staying right on top. Can he get here in time? No, Dragonite back to safety. Everyone from Divination survived. Huff Money getting ear, going on to BKB there. Instead of waiting for the Dragonite to expire, get the stun lock onto Phoenix, preventing the teleport, uh, which would have been an amazing kill for Necro Dancers if they could have worked it out, but instead, Everyone gets away just fine for the time being, so both camps going to reset a bit, refocus on getting that camp pressure, getting those lanes pushed out, and getting closer to level 24 divination. They are a two-level lead ahead over Necro Dancers, trying to bring this to game number three to extend their tournament lives here in open division, get that higher seating in the playoffs next week, and they're doing a fantastic job. If they keep this up, it's totally in the grasp. Well, here comes the first attempt at any siege the entire game. And it's before Divination has level 20. So a uh, smart play here by Necro Dancers. Is they're looking to find something on this map. There's still two levels behind Cat Peach. And there's not a lot of opportunity, as I keep mentioning, for them to find any structures because they just lack the structural damage from any of these heroes. So they got to find something. It's going to be this bottom fort, and wisely so, is going to be Divination giving it up. But they can't afford to give up this keep wall because that's really their lane of pressure. Yeah, absolutely. To give up that, that lane of pressure, especially with these giants behind the rest of Necro Dancers, any bot lane event they had is suddenly gone when you said that win condition is off the table and they know that De necro dancers are a-okay pushing in this deep even though they're at a disadvantage by levels they are still on talent and that is all they need here so they're going to push as long as possible to see if they can catch someone from divination going into deep uh, let me remind twitch chat we were in a similar position over on battlefield of eternity game number one where necro dancers found themselves down a keep and were able to pull it back and win the game so they're looking to do the same thing here but is it going to be too hard this time around will they be able to grab a dragon knight which they have yet to grab this entire game um they're going to look for it here as the shrines are active yorel's up top will be able to grab the top side uh but they got to find a way to get up there and deal with their liam has been a monster on the goat all here are all game long 
Yeah, absolutely. I was worried that the members of Necrodancer were going to rotate top and try to catch Arel off guard, but it looks like they were just going to focus in that mid lane for now. Another camp grabbed for Divination to help Urel in that top lane, hopefully take out that top fort. Uh, and as for now, Divination going back to their structures, making sure that Necrodancers can't force a fight that wouldn't jeopardize their own positioning in this match, waiting for them to make the mistake before they get too aggressive trying to finish off this game. Yeah, no, I think you're spot on. Uh, it's gonna have to be a play from physicals on Zeratul if they have any shot of finding anything. With now level 20s for Divination, they're looking to play aggressive, and then gonna jump forward. Uh, but you gotta watch physicals. He's hanging out in the full shadows right now. If someone walks past, he could just jump on top and throw out this DP, but now his team's backing up so far. They're gonna concede away this bottom shrine unless Huff Money wants to try to make play. There's the BP locking in two. And this is the opportunity they're looking for, but they're not finding any damage. And Fallen first is gonna be physicals on the Zera tool. A big pickup there for the members of Divination as they're looking for more. Bunker's down, but now getting knocked back and Huff Money in his aerial. It's gonna be a triple kill for it's the members trip. of Divination. They could be next. They could be next. The Cocoon always going out onto Hanzo, making sure that damage isn't available for Necro Dancers. And with three kills there, again, resetting the souls on Diablo. Faye finally falls. Huff Money and the attacker responding to this camp finally in the top lane that was already able to take out that fort while everything was going on in bottom. And this Dragonite is prepped to push either another keep or come right through bottom. There's still some time left on these death timers for Necrodancers. There can be a lot of damage put the onto this core before the members are ready to defend. Catapults here, there's two of them. Siege Giants here, there's two of them. Dragon Knights here, and it's ready to rip down this core. Shielding's almost down, and they're looking to put damage on Diablo, but they find a kill first on Zeratul. Diablo's next, a double kill, as the Dragon Knight will secure game number two for Divination, bringing us to game number three. Divination not wanting to end the night just yet. That final damage coming out, making sure that Dragon Knight is able to push on that core without any issues. Divination looking on fire that match, not having the same late game potential as game number one on the side of Necro, Dan Necro Dancers to make something up. We saw the comeback because of the damage coming out from Lee Bing, but like you talked about during that game, there was no real siege damage coming out from Necro Dancers, so they weren't able to capitalize on any of that. And for a team so focused on getting those kills we have one kill to 10 in favor of divination that game Rita. yeah very very solid play looking a lot better and i think a lot of it was again the synergy that rainer and phoenix uh, bring to each other applying the slows getting the crit damages out um but also you can't forget uh bkb coming in really setting up a lot of plays. He was the only hero to die on the side of Divination, but he set up so much for his squad. The Cocoons were on point. Uh, this time, not so easy to be blinked out by Faye because uh, she's playing Hanzo instead of Li Ming. So they found value there. And ultimately, bringing us to game number three means they get a shot to keep their uh, fourth place hopes alive here in uh, the HGC Open Division North America.